as we begin to study your word, Lord, let us stay focused on what we're learning and let ask that you abide in us as we abide in you. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. We are on Facebook Live. Yes. And I'll, I'll give us uh, like a minute for those of us that wants to connect and share. Uh, oh. so that we can get that done in the next one minute, then we can start the, the discussion. All right. Let me close this. <laughs> You want water? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I got my water out of the side. Huh? I got my water out of the side. Yeah. Oh, that's Praise God. So if, if we have done that, um, we start uh, tonight, we shall be looking at um, a topic, why we need to continue to shine. In the course of the month, we started our discussion. The first uh, discussion was on Jesus, the sure and solid foundation. And we know that the Jesus is the surest and the most solid foundation. And there can never be any other foundation laid by any man except the one that is laid by Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, Jesus Christ is a sheer cornerstone, and it is only foolish believers that reject this truth. Mm -hmm. And that is not our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the next uh, we looked at, uh, let your light shine. And um, well, we read Matthew 13, Matthew 5, 13 to 16. And um, we try and identify what light is and why we must shine. 
then last last monday we we asked a question how do you shine how do we shine we said there's no better time for us to shine than now and uh now is because of the, the uncertainties the darkness around and everything that is going on this is the best time to shine and we said what must you do to shine we said we must be connected to the source of supply of light if we are not connected to the source then there's no way one can shine we established that the source of light is from god if we are not if we are disconnected from the source from the lord there's no way we can shine if we are disconnected from jesus there's no way we can shine we remember in john chapter one uh reading from one to five said in the beginning was the world the world was with god and the world was god so and this word uh became flesh and turned became the light of men and this light shined in darkness and darkness could not comprehend it so the word of god is the source of light jesus is the source of light and um, god is the source of light so we need to maintain that connection so tonight we shall be looking at um why must you continue to shine why is it important that we must continue to shine we must understand the context of this there are some people when they gave their life to christ they were they were shining they were doing well they were sharing the word they were connected to the word and gradually that light begins to dim that light if it has not finally cut off it has very little light it's shining so but we must why must we avoid that why must we ensure that we continue to shine let's start from our anchor scripture that we've been reading since the beginning of this study matthew chapter 5 verse 13 to 16. i'll be glad if somebody can help us read that matthew chapter 5 13 to 16. Sister Ella, are you in a position to read? I sure am. Go ahead. Matthew. We are 13 oh, through 15. Correct. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill, a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let's continue to 16. Me? 16. Okay. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Praise the Lord. So let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and they will glorify your Father who is in heaven. So the introduction I have here is if light refuses to shine, it ceases to carry out the original purpose for which it is meant. If light cannot shine again, 
it becomes irrelevant and useless. If you have a bulb in your house and it stops giving light, what do you automatically do? You discard it away. And it's no longer useful to you. And that is the essence of why we must continue to shine. Every time there will be situations that may want to stop us from shining. And when we say shine, what do we actually mean by shining? Let me just get so that we are all on the same page. Not every one of us started this study together. Is Sister Christine still there? Sister Christine, are you there? Sister Christine, you are muted. You are muted. Can mm -hmm. you? Okay, good. So when we talk okay. about shining, what do we? What do you understand by us? By shining as a as a child of God. Um, um, like your actions in church, like how you how you carry yourself. I would say, if you're for God, if you talk to people about God or try to people to God. That's what I'm saying. Our actions. So, what kind of action typifies shining for a child of God? God bless you, Sister Oyin. Thank you for joining. And uh, Sister Janelle, I see you are connected. Wow, we have a large, a large yes, audience. Yes, Pastor. Ah, yes, hello. Thank you. Sister Maquina, <laughs> Sister Victoria, you are all welcomed. So who can give more light to Thank us you, on what it means to shine so that we are all on the same page? Please. My, my, um, I believe that in order to let my light shine, I need to act as if I love my sisters and brothers in Christ, just like I love my neighbor. And if I can help them, if I can feed them, if I can give them a ride somewhere, if I can show the Jesus in me, I think that will be showing my light. Without them asking me who I am, I should show the love of Jesus in my actions. Praise God. I like yeah. that, that answer. He said, uh, like that verse 16 said, let your light so shine that men will see your good works. So it is not the amount, the abundance of what you say, it is in the abundance of what you do. There's a way you show the actions we, we show to others that really let them know that, oh, indeed, thank God for Sister Janelle. They glorify God because of you. Oh, if not for Pastor Barry, I would have been stranded. It is our action. And that is the essence of this study, that as children of God, we must continue to show good works because we are representing, God gave us his light so that we can shine the light for others to benefit from it. And when they see it in us, they get attracted to us and they want to know where we get the light from. Then they can now get connected themselves to the light. And that is the only way we can totally eradicate darkness. Because if you are the only light in your community, like um, back in Nigeria, they, we only have uh, this PG and E electricity maybe once every week. So if you in your own house, you have a portable generator and you, you put it on, you have light in your house, but everybody in your neighborhood doesn't have light, 
the everywhere is still dark. It's just your own environment that looks to have some light. But if you can connect your generator to other people's house, connect them to other people's house, connect them, before you know it, everywhere becomes lighted with light. And that is more beautiful to behold because there's no beauty in darkness. With somebody also chipping their thoughts about what it means to, to show light, to, to shine. If anybody can do that, so that we, this discussion could be more, more interesting and educative. Okay, let's 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 uh, continue. The next is we we'll, we're going to be looking at benefits of shining, and I think more discussion will come from there. I I say here one of the benefits of shining is that your life affects others regularly and positively as you keep shining. Can somebody open to Colossians chapter four, verse five to six, while another open to Philippians two and 15. Colossians four, five to six. He says, walk in wisdom towards them that are without redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Mm. Praise God. Mm. That's Colossians. Uh, Five to six. <clears throat> yes. So, can somebody read Philippians two fifteen, please? Then we'll so that you may become. Oh, sorry. So that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault and a warped and crooked generation. Praise but, God. Thank you, sister. Oh, then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. I'm trying to open the scriptures. Can somebody just uh, speak to those scriptures that we just read? What, what, what does that convey to us? Let's start from the Colossians. Colossians. Colossians 4, 5 to 6. Colossians 4, 5 to 6. Let's look at that again. What does it? So walk in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. That is, that is very important. You know, what you say could, could encourage somebody to believe more in himself, to believe he has a chance, or you can say something else to cause that person to think that he's useless in this world. Let me just go and commit suicide. Mm -hmm. He said, let your speech be, be with grace, 
seasoned with salt. Salt is sweet. We must be there to encourage, to even when we, when we try to critique somebody, to correct somebody, the correction should be with grace, not demeaning the person. That is one of the benefits of, of us shining. You know, that if you speak to somebody, no matter how, what the situation is, they feel, they still see love in what you say, even when you are correcting them, when you are critical of what they have done. And, um, and by walking in wisdom, walking with grace, speaking, you know, there's what is called um, sandwich communication. Sandwich communication. And in sandwich communication, we all know sandwich. Amen. What information you, you want to pass across is inside. But you, you cover it with some salt, with some grace, even though you want to give them something bitter. The peel is bitter, but you put it in a capsule so that they will be happy to swallow it and they will even thank you for it. And that is what is called sandwich communication. Don't, you know, don't, don't, don't show your, your stick already before even uh, you start the discussion. L let it be seasoned with love, seasoned with uh, some um, juicy things, and then within it, you communicate the correction. And that way you are able to, they were able to accept it because you must understand something. I'm focusing on um, when you are correcting now, because if you are praising somebody, that's good. But when you are correcting, the important thing is that you want the person to accept the correction and to change. But if you end up trying to correct, and in doing that, you run the patient, uh, the person away and you don't even know get the person angry and it's worse off than you started with the person you have not achieved anything and that's even more important in a in a in a in a, in a, in a christian uh uh environment people different people will come to you to judge with wrong ideas, with wrong mentalities that needs to be corrected. How you do it is very important. Your speech must be seasoned with grace. It must be, and the correction must be sincere, but must be in love. And not to get the person to be worse than is the person started with. I hope uh, I got that across very well. Anybody can can ship into that thought that I just made. Pastor Steve. Yes, sir. Um, one of the things that I've learned when addressing, whether it be through some form of correction or some form of information is, you have to, uh, they have to understand why a correction needs to be made. They have okay. to see beforehand what it is that they were doing wrong to be shown. Uh, when you talk about walking wisdom towards them that are without redeeming the time, I can't walk to somebody without knowing why I'm walking to them. I can't walk to them and try to correct them if I don't understand why they need to be corrected. And that's where it's talking about uh, let your speech always be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. And the only way my speech is going to be seasoned is if I understand the word and I know the word and I'm able to show them and preach to them. It's not about preaching sometimes, but it's about, like you said, the correction. And uh, one of the things I used to do when I was a supervisor at a pallet company was I'd have a five minute meeting with my crew. And I used to 
express to them where I had come from, a small testimony and try to motivate them and, and show them why they need to do certain things. There were some that were slacking. There were some that were just playing around at work, some that weren't living right. And I showed them where I had come from, how I had come from it, and how God had done those things for me. Mm -hmm. uh, within a month, my numbers doubled, uh, wow. our profits increased, and wow. it's because they wanted to learn. They wanted to listen, and they wanted to be a part of that now. And that's part of how you're talking about how you correct somebody, how you go to somebody. And that's that light that was shining. Um, I don't like to... I don't like to push myself out there because I feel like I'm unworthy sometimes. I mean, soon you'll hear a testimony, you know, soon I'll be strong enough to go back up there again and testify and uh, give my testimony and show. But right now I know how far I've fallen. Mm -hmm. You know, I went 10 years without saying a cuss word to not being able to say a cuss word in under 10 seconds. You know, I got a little Zeppelin in the back room yelling across the room. You owe me a dollar for that. You know, it's like, I'm trying to get back to where I need to be. So it's kind of, it's kind of hard sometimes when I go out there and try to correct them. But what I'm getting at is if in order to do that properly, I have to know why, you know, and I have to, I have to be able to show them. And that's through my walk, through the light that God was giving me. And that's not going to shine if I'm not walking right or understand why. Praise God. Thank you for uh, that, um, you know, observation and that, uh, you know, that's a uh, contribution uh, from Brother Aimee. Uh, the truth is, the most important thing is that uh, pursuing the right thing, put your leg in the right path. Nobody is perfect. We are all working towards perfection. As long as you, you're taking it a day at a time, and that is all we can all do, a day at a time, and trusting God to keep us blameless and harmless before him. And that is what we can do. And that is another way you correct people is not sometimes you don't always have to correct with speech. You have to correct with your action. Somebody is not doing it right. You just do go ahead and take care of it. Show him how to do it. Next time he will see you, how you have done it, how you live your life, how you speak, how you, you deal with others might even correct more than you actually talking to that person. So these are the different ways that we, like um, the Philippians chapter two, verse 15 said that you may be blameless and harmless. So you that you think you are there, live a Christian life that is blameless, harmless, and when people see you, they may want to emulate you. He said, in the midst of this crooked and perverse nation, at your place of work, in your community, don't do what others do just because it is popular. Do what is right, even though it is not popular, even though it is not convenient. Then, you'll be the light that will shine as light in that world. Because we all have our, our little worlds around us, our little worlds that we can influence by our light. And I pray that God will help us even uh, in that quest in the name of Jesus. God bless you, Sister Me and uh, Sister Marquina for joining. So what's another benefit of shining that I have on a manual here is you become a terror to the kingdom of darkness. Once we are shining, the enemy cannot do anything. And uh, when they hear you, when they hear about you, they start changing their ways. You know, they say, oh, Sister, my wife said, I can't afford to smoke uh, because I know it, she will not like it. Oh, brother, Amy is around. So let's, you know, let's stop all this uh, we're trying to, we're trying to do. 
So you 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 create an environment in your around you that people will have no choice but to 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 fall in line. And if they can't fall in line, they have to leave you and leave that uh, take away their darkness around from you. Uh, mm. Let's read Ephesians chapter five, verse eight to fourteen. Ephesians chapter five, verse eight to fourteen. Yes, right. I will read that, Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Ephesians chapter eight, chapter five, verse eight. For ye were sometimes darkness, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret, but all things that are reproved are made manifest for the light for whoso for whatsoever doeth make manifest is light. Wherefore he says, awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Read, oh, that was the last one. My apology. Praise God. It is well, yeah. <laughs> redeeming the time because the days are evil wow that's 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 that scripture is totally loaded it's loaded with uh discussion points pastor berry will you shed us some lights based on these scriptures we just read amen and just before i, I go i go to that um I, 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 was, I was thinking about the issue of, you know, I, when it comes to correcting others. And you've heard of people who say, oh, don't, uh, you know, you, don't, don't, don't preach wine and drink water, or don't bring, preach water and drink wine, <laughs> whichever comes first. Um, you know, when you correct people, they want to see the same, same thing you are correcting them if you are doing it. Because you can't tell people not to do what you do it uh, really doesn't make uh, any meaning, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to them why sh you should not, they should do what you're telling them not to do, and yet you are doing it. Um, now, on this very passage of uh, Ephesians 5, verse 8, they say, the Bible says that, that for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So when we were in darkness, we walked as children of the dark. We walked mm -hmm. as children of the world without any, any you know, focus, accountability, responsibility. We lived carelessly because after all, it was, uh, you know, it is my life. That's how we used to look at it. But now we are looking at it differently. That I am accountable to my father who has called me from the powers of darkness into his marvelous light. So now that you know that you have more responsibility and you have more undertakings in the things of God, it helps you to refocus and helps you to understand that I'm living with a purpose and for a purpose, that I'm not just existing to pass through this time. Mm -hmm. I don't have all the time to, to keep, you know, wasting away and uh, idling and uh, you know, waking up in the morning for, for breakfast, lunch, dinner, going to bed, you know, day in, day out, putting on some good pounds. And, you know, we are not, we realize that we are not actually here for that, but we are here because God has called us for a mission. And so that mission needs to be seen that you are actually undertaking that mission, that you are doing what God wants you to do. That's how your light is going to be seen. You can't say, hey, come and see, I am the light. You no, know, light does not uh, ask anyone to go and see it's the light. When the light comes in, darkness disappears. So when you are walking in the light 
and you know that these times we are living in are the last days, the things you'll be doing will attract other people automatically to follow what you are doing because they will be looking at things around and they and because the world is now in despair. So the, the, the people are confused, but because you know that these are the days that the Bible talked about, the beginning of the end of the last, of the, the science of the last days, then you'll be showing the light on what needs to be done because you'll be living right with God and helping others out of um, ways which are not of God. Amen. 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 Praise God. So um, we've had that. That is exactly what that is saying to us. We must uh, be willing to arise from the darkness that we were in. God has, we've been born again, but we need to, being born again, we, we have the connection to the light. But it's a different thing for you to be connected to light. Is another thing for you to shine the light. Many children of God, which born again, tongue speaking, are connected to light. They come to church. They receive the word. But they only they, we, they, they are only known as Christian in the four walls of the church. When they, they call them Sunday, Sunday medicine. On Sundays, they lift up holy hands, but when they are out there in the community, they are back to the, to the darkness and they fit very well into the darkness in the community. No wonder the Bible is saying here that awake, those that are sleeping arise from the dead. When you when you are back in the darkness, it's as if you are you are you are in the grave. And allow the light of God that Christ has given you to shine. You know, First Peter chapter uh, five uh, and verse eight says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is moving around. There's darkness everywhere. We just need to not just play church. Let's live this life. Live the life of a Christian, and that is the only way we can, our light can shine and we can make a difference in our world. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Another benefit I see here is boldness becomes a lifestyle. I said here, light is not afraid of darkness. Fear is associated with darkness. And I want us to, to, to understand that. And to when you are shining, when you are shining, you don't entertain fear. You are bold. The Bible says the, the righteous is as bold as a lion. The righteous is as bold as a lion. We, he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So if we, are, we have the love of God in our hearts and we are sharing that love to others, the Bible says, that there is no fear in love. And perfect love cast out fear. So once we allow the love of God to be grounded and rooted in our hearts, mm -hmm. we, 
live a life of boldness because we know we are standing on the solid rock. Let's read Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1. Proverbs 28, verse 1, and another Act 4, 13, and another Act 19, 8. Proverbs 8, 1. Pastor, I'll read again. Proverbs 8 and 1. Yes. Doeth not wisdom cry? Doeth not wisdom cry? And understanding put forth her voice? That's Proverbs 8 and 1. Okay. Proverbs 8 and 1. Was that supposed to be 28 and 1 or 1, 8 and 1? 28 and 1. Okay, I read the wrong one. I apologize. Let's see here. Let me go back. Proverbs 28 and 1 reads, The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Praise God. That's 28 and 1. And uh, who is reading um, Acts 4, 13, right? Mm. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, and they took knowledge of them that they had um, been with Jesus. Mm. You see? The knowledge of them that they've been with Jesus. Why? How did they? How did they know that they've been with Jesus? Because, because they were manifesting like Jesus. Mm. They had. They were bold. Even though they did not, they were online. They don't know. They didn't know English or Jew or they can't speak real English. Like uh, in that time, I'm, I'm sure they were speaking uh, Hebrew. They did not know it. Peter and John, they were only fishermen. And I doubt if they went to a former school. But because they were with Jesus, they were with Jesus and they were standing on truth, on righteousness. They, they, they could not ignore them. People could not ignore them because they showed that they had Jesus, the word of God in them. Hallelujah. So it Hallelujah. is not the amount of your uh, education, even if you did not go to a former school, but you still study, sit down on the word of God. People will still see you. There are many pastors today that did not finish um, uh, college but they are doing great works for God mm. and signs and wonders are happening. Man. So we just need to, when we are shining, it enhance our boldness, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, the other scripture is uh, Acts chapter 19, 19 verse eight. It's eight. Yeah. Acts 19, eight. And he said, the Bible says, and he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. Praise God. So, uh, 19.8, yeah. And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for the space of three months disputing counter arguments and persuading them on the things concerning the kingdom of God. Wow. Because they have the light of God in them. That gave them boldness. Gave Paul boldness. For three months, he was there. And knowing fully well, they passed 
the, Paul had a, a, a very dark past, but immediately he came to the light, nothing could, could take him back to darkness. And uh, you can imagine how it, 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 it needed to be bold to go back to the same people that you are persecuting Christians together before, and now going back to them, saying that they were wrong, you were wrong then, and um, now trying to redirect their mind. And it was there for three months. It took boldness because it was standing on the truth and it, it was connected to the source of light. And in verse 11, I say, and while doing that, God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul that even from his body, they, they brought out, they, 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 they brought out handkerchiefs that was healing the sick and evil spirit was because of the kind of light, he was fired up that even his clothing is a mantle that was healing the sick. God mm -hmm. would take us to that level as a people in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the next uh, question I have is, what are the dangers of not shining? What are the things that can happen if we refuse to shine as a Christian? If, because when you refuse to shine as a Christian, most, most, most people around you will, not, will never know you are a Christian. And mm. when, when they don't know you are a Christian, it is very easy for you to do what they are doing and, and you will not feel anything about it because they never knew you are a Christian. And yes. gradually, as you are doing what the people in the world are doing, what, what does that represent? Gradually, you are losing your faith and you are already conforming to the world and you are automatically backsliding. Mm -hmm. So if you refuse to shine, then you run the danger of backsliding. That you that have put your hand on the plow and now you are looking back, it makes you unfit for the kingdom. Kingdom of God. Let's read Matthew 26, verse 58, and also 69 to 74. Matthew 26, 58. This was the when Jesus was being led to be crucified. He said, but Peter followed him afar off into the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. The emphasis is followed him afar off. Peter disconnected at that time from Jesus mm. became far. Backsliding takes you far away from Jesus. Backsliding takes you far away from, from the light. And that was what Peter was, was doing. And um, if you now read verse 69, Read verse 69 to 74. It will shed more light. He said, now Peter sat without in the palace and a damsel came to him saying, thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all saying, I know not what thou said. And when he had gone out of the pouch, another maid asked him, 
and said unto him that were there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said to Peter, surely thou also art one of them for thy speech betrayed thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And that is the danger of staying away from the source of light. Peter stayed afar off and he became disconnected at that moment because of the, and he began to entertain fear that even a little girl, he could not speak the truth to a little girl. And after the court crew, he began to weep because he realized that he has missed it. He, 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 he lost it. And that is the danger of not shining. But if you had stayed close to Jesus, they were taking your master away. You should have stayed close to him and said, yes. And that way, that, that, that issue, that's a uh, uh, concern of backsliding, of having even, even to deny, will never have arisen. Let's read um, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. Second Timothy chapter four, verse 10. I have that. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world and is departed unto Thessalonica, mm -hmm. Crescens mm -hmm. to Galactia, Titus unto Dalmatia? Dalmatia, yeah. So that's okay. that is what Paul <laughs> when he was given his uh, valedictory valedictory speech when he was about to to leave. Mm. That Demas forsaked me. Demas backslid. He, he stopped sharing the gospel. He stopped uh, shining his light. He stopped manifesting as a Christian. Why? Because if if he he, he 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 has started loving the the world instead of he has started conforming to the world, mm. and that is the danger. When we refuse to shine, we begin to conform. Oh, yes. When you refuse to shine, you begin to do what to conform. That is the danger. That is the danger. That is the danger. When we refuse to shine, we begin to do what? To conform. Conform. Mm -hmm. We start doing what they are doing. And they don't know, we will not, they won't be able to make a difference between us and the world mm -hmm. once we stop shining. Another danger is spiritual and physical death. We saw in the case of uh, Saul, King yes. Saul. Mm -hmm. King Saul disobeyed, disobeyed the, the Lord's instruction in 1 Samuel chapter 28, and he suffered a spiritual death because the Lord said, uh, Samuel said, he has already taken his kingdom away from him. Why? Because he was disobedient. He refused to obey the word of God, the instructions of God. And the Bible says to obey is, is better than any sacrifice, any sacrifice. you can make. Let's read 1 Samuel 28, 3 and 6 and 7. 
28.3. First Samuel 28.3. Now, now Samuel had died and all Israel had lamented for him and buried him in Rema, in his own city and Saul had put the, the mediums and the spirits out of the land. And verse six, and when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, hmm. either by dreams or by Urim or hmm. by the prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, find me a woman who is a medium that I may go to her and inquire of her. And hmm. his servant hmm. said to him, in fact, there is a woman who is a medium you at see? Endor. You see, you see, Saul that was anointed by God himself, mm. but the spirit of the Lord departed from him because of the issue of sin. And uh, before he knew it, he already had evil spirits inside him. And when he wanted to speak to the Lord, the Lord did not speak to him. He has suffered spiritual death. Now he is now looking for witches and, and wizards to, to, to help him. Can you imagine how the mighty has fallen? one anointed of god one that was that was the first anointed king mm. of israel falling to the point of now looking for for people for for we, wishes to help him uh to deliver him from the the familiar spirit that that he, 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 he had. Hmm. We also saw the case of uh, Samson in Judges because he stopped shining a light as the anointed of God to deliver Israel from the hand of the Philistines. He fell into sin and lost his uh, the anointing is spirit on the lap of a woman. And uh, when it came to a time when he felt he still had the anointing and the spirit of God in him, just like before, trying to call forth for that anointing, he did not know that the anointing has left him. He had yeah. suffered spiritual death that ultimately led to his physical death. Mm. Why? because it stopped shining. So when, as Christians, if we stop shining, one, the first thing that will happen is spiritual death. And uh, we, our heart becomes seared. Mm. Our conscience is gone. And sin no longer means anything to us. And not too long after that, the next thing that will follow is sickness, debilitating sickness that might ultimately lead to our death. May that not be the portion of any one of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we have the responsibility to continue to seek God, connect to God, and in the any way we can to shine our light as much as we can so that we will not suffer spiritual death and we will not suffer physical death in the name of Jesus. Amen. And one thing in conclusion, Before we conclude, do we have any contribution or comment from or question regarding the study we've been going through since the beginning of this month? Because this will conclude the study for this month and we'll start a new one next week. Uh, 
is. Okay. You know, Pastor, everything that uh, I heard uh, tonight has been good. Uh, <clears throat> and when I was listening to everyone, when they were talking about darkness and light, and it made me think about where we are today. And it made me think about, uh, you, you mentioned, I made a comment about um, some preachers are educated and some are not, and the ones who may not be educated from a theological or seminary are more knowledgeable and greater in that Bible than the seminary people. But when we talk about seminary people, sometimes you can call them cemetery people. And one of the things, and one of the things that one of the things that I would like to say is that uh, when uh, we talk about darkness, and I, I can't see too good, but I got some little note. When we talk about darkness, uh, I wrote down uh, 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 the writings from the Birmingham jail to all of those preachers. And all of those preachers, when they were talking about love, many yeah. of those preachers did not come to listen to what King was talking about as related to love. And uh, I'm being very brief. And then uh, the other part of that, we have a responsibility of preaching love Mm -hmm. that will bring us away from the darkness. Everyone, everyone who hollers and talk about, I am a Christian. And I use this as an example. <clears throat> when I was on the school board, people would come to the school board and talk about uh, that they were big Christian. So mm -hmm. I got fed up. So I asked one day, from a historical standpoint here in America, I said, when we talk about it, Christians, I'm a Christian. The one thing that I care about is people. And that is across all lines. But yeah. some people from a historical standpoint, they were able to go to church and go hang me after church. And for those of you who understand history, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You see? And when I said that, they all got quiet. But there was a black minister in there. He said, amen. <laughs> because he understood exactly what I was saying. And when we look at, and when we look at what is going on today, right mm -hmm. now, for election time, that is what I was talking about. Is that when I say theology, and when some preachers are up there preaching, you can take the great theological people like, I don't know what you all thought about it. What's his name? Uh, everybody, this this one minister, everybody thought he was so great. But he, Graham. Billy Graham, he never spent no time walking with Martin Luther King. He wouldn't even have the guts to walk across that bridge. And so what I'm saying is, we don't need to talk about how religious we are and how much of a Christian we are, but all we have to do is show our actions. And our actions are, how do we treat one another? And our purpose is to, to glorify our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And then people will see how we carry ourselves and then they can identify with that. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Elder Carl for that um, in-depth and uh, analysis and uh, contribution. I appreciate that. Sister Janelle, any contribution, any question? No, sir. No Mr. question. I appreciate everything you shared with us tonight. Sister Christine, any question, contributions? Yes, okay. okay. I didn't know that being scared was um, you're in darkness. What? Like, I'm trying to fly. You said that if you're scared, that means you're in darkness. So it means I'm scared to fly, I'm in darkness? No, when you are fear, attract darkness. Fear attracts darkness. Faith attracts light. 
So when you and when you have faith, you are able to shine, and that light takes away darkness from you. So it is like this fear comes to everyone, but not everyone is fearful. When fear knocks at your door, if you are a man or a woman of faith, faith will open the door. And once faith opens the door, fear runs away. But if you are not a man or a woman of faith, once fear knocks the door, Open, open the door widely and comes in and sits down. And uh, it takes prayer and other things to be delivered of that fear. <laughs> so, so, that, so that is uh, that. So, but if you, that's why the Bible said, we have not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So, love casted out fear. Mm. But like I said, fear comes to everyone. Fear comes to, nobody is shielded to fear. Nobody, fear will always want to come and knock the door. Mm. But it is what, how you respond that matters. Do you give in to fear or you you fight away the fear. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Sister Winnie, you have a question, contribution? No, sir. Thank you. Thank you for joining. What about uh, Sister Victoria? Amen. Amen. Contribution, clarifications? Oh, I believe we have all learned a lot uh, tonight. Um, it's been a great and wonderful time. Amen. You know, to be at the feet of, of Christ, as we have learned that we should let our light shine. Amen. Amen. Even in the midst of that. Mm. Uh, my contribution is... Um, Try to let your light, sh uh, your light shine so that they might see your good work and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. As we have read. Well, there might be some challenges. Like you said, if you don't let your light shine, um, darkness will prevail. Like, mm. um, at, let's say at your workplace, mm -hmm. if you don't shine the light of God in you, Mm -hmm. Then you are bound to join them. You are mm. bound to um, mm. to do what they do mm. because you fail to shine the light. But my question is: We are living in this world, in this uh, world and community, um, that they have their own routine and way of life, mm. and even sometimes is you are bound to not to even share the gospel, to share the word of God to them. So in that sense, you want to make the light of God to shine, to share the word of God to them, but um, it takes God's wisdom and grace because a lot of people have got in trouble even for merely sharing the gospel or saying something about God. You, you mean only trouble, uh, like uh, uh, Honorable Lewis, only trouble? Like <laughs> Like being fired, <laughs> at work. you know, so many cases. I'm saying, like, that, um, because it's kind of concern if you really want to shine the light of God in that environment, that uh, there's a restriction, and you know, to I, I, I understand what you mean, Auntie. Yeah. yeah, I was just trying to crack a joke with uh, Congressman <laughs> Lewis. He said, <laughs> uh, you, Is it only trouble? <laughs> <laughs> it is well. It is Thank well. you. 
Yeah, thank you for that uh, contribution. Definitely, there are some we know we we have to be sensitive to the environment we have. But more importantly, nobody can stop you from acting right. Mm -hmm. They may want to silence your speech, but your action is may speak louder than even you trying to read the Bible or, or speak to them. Your life, your action, there are situations in which you can you will be able to share. If not, let your action, your lifestyle, your love life, your giving life, you're not being selfish, you know, you're not joining them to commit evil, to commit when they say two two of you got to the to the to sign your time seat at the same time, while they put their own 303, but you got that, both of you got that 310. You put 310 on on top of uh 310 on top mm. of the person that came and wrote 33. So they will know who is right because you are trying to do the right thing. They, nobody will 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 do no organization will arm you or will say oh this one is is preaching gospel no you doing just working our lifestyle is like an epistle people like to read now they don't want mm -hmm. to read the bible they want to read us as an epistle sister mm -hmm. ella and brother amy any contribution or questions um I love what Brother Johnson said about the, the love and um, like the seminary, the cemetery. I was, because that always reminded me of when I was taught <laughs> about how uh, that was the difference between the apostles back then and disciples and the Pharisees. The Pharisees, mm. it was all about law, 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 lock it in, lock it in. This is what it is to where there was no more love, there was no more emotion. For what they were doing it was just this is what's written this is what we do what we follow and the difference between that and being a true man of god and walking with that light is that you're doing it out of love you're doing it out of what he's done for you and you're doing it not to not to say look at me but to give the example of what he's done for you yes. because it was only through him that it was done mm. and Oh, uh, we read in Ephesians earlier, the sister kept reading on, and to me, there was a reason she kept reading on when it talked about uh, walking circumventally and not as a wise man, not as a fool. And because the enemy's around us everywhere, you know, he's disguised, he's right in front of us. He'll smile right at you, he'll run up on you and give you a hug, you know, walk right away, or he'll sit there and leer at you from the side, and you know, it's dangerous. And you have to be wise in the word, you have to be wise in knowing you know, where you're at, be aware of where you're at and still do what needs to be done for God, you know, still do what needs to be done to walk that way and to show what he's done for you, you know, and it's just, you know, I love that. I love the way he brought that up, you know, and it's just, that was the difference between the uneducated apostles back then. Who is this uneducated man? Who is this? You know, he, he, he ain't got no school and he ain't never been nowhere. But he had something way more important than he had, and that was a true love and connection to God, to Jesus, because they you know, believed in him. You know, there's uh, the, 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 the work of is not about theology. Many people, they, they understand the theology, but ministry is much more than theology. You know, you can have a professor of theology that does not know that Christ exists and that does not have a relationship with Christ. So, uh, so those are two different, he's a professor of theology, he's gone to all this, done all the theses and all those stuffs. But even when you still ask him, does he, he does not even have faith in the Bible he is studying. So, <laughs> so those are, so I can, so when grandpa said, uh, um, uh, is it seminarians and cemetery? I, I can understand what he's talking about. <laughs> Sister Ella, any, any, you want to chip in something for us? Praise God. Is Melody there? I see Melody is connected. 
Is Melody disconnected? Maybe Melody wants to give us a perspective. Yeah, say hi to everyone. I know you're typing stuff. You said yes. You want to say hi to us, Sister Melody? I appreciate you joining us tonight. Hi. What does, what does light 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 means to you, and how do you want to sh how how do you want to shine the light to your to your friends? Well, like shining the light to my friends is for me. I think sometimes is when if when I find my friends sad, I I'm the person who gives energy to them. So I feel like I'm there to make them happy. Yeah and light up their day praise god and i remember in your basketball team that was what you were doing for them you were making them happy you were shining you you were the source of their joy they were surrounding you when they are down you encourage them yeah. more goes to you and we are all proud of you what you're doing god bless you thank you is this um may still there or pastor kemi I don't know. Yes, we are. Okay. Can we yes, hear from we you? We are both here. Okay, good. Let's here. hear from you. <laughs> and I know I noticed that May will have something to share with us. No, no, not really. I'm this time around, I'm really just soaking it all in because I'm back and forth with work and the, okay. and the service. So I'm just okay. soaking it all in. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Mommy there. Yeah, she's yes. here. She's answering to somebody else right now as well. Praise God. Pastor Sophie, Pastor Barry, anything before we close? Yeah, we're good, we're good. I think all has been said. Praise God. And uh, I want us to, to really thank God for the choir. The, the choir, they did marvelously well. Very, very let's, good. Let's just, for them for strength yeah. for God to strengthen them they put in hours time yeah. efforts for this conference and my heart really blesses them and I yeah. pray that God will continue to renew their strength in the name of Jesus Amen. we have the best choir in, like I mean, in the whole of California based on <laughs> understanding and yeah. it's not just the physical is a mental mental work mm -hmm. some of the songs they had to rehearse how to know it how to it takes time mm -hmm. and their leader especially the choice of the music and things like that that is another mental work mm -hmm. god bless you pastor sophie i'm deeply deeply happy for what the lord is using you to do and, and uh, something for president. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Sister May? And it's something for president. Okay. Yeah. Sister yeah. May for Sister yeah. May for vice president. <laughs> Bless you both. It's amazing. And the and the thank God for the male voice in the choir. Pastor yes. May. <laughs> Despite he does, he said it would not be nice to not to have a male voice in the choir, and he decided to add that on to, to his stripes. God bless you. God honor you. Amen. You in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we thank God for how far the Lord has helped us through these teachings this month. I believe all of us have access to the manual. Like I always say, let's go to the website. How many don't know how to get access to the manual? You need help. I can help you when I see you. Let me know. go to the website. It is there. And um, we want to encourage the use of the website more than ever because there are other things where you go there you also have access to other materials that we have that can help in our growth uh in a total growth for us as a church and as a people of god god bless you 
and God continues to increase you in all you do and thank you all for your participation, contributions and support for the conference. It is the best conference ever. And I thank Amen. God for the move of God and the Holy Spirit. And I know that every declaration that has been released into your life will begin to see manifestation in the name of Jesus. Amen. Actually, today we'll, we started getting testimonies already. Uh, testimonies already pouring in today. So yours is going to be next. In the Our prayer and fasting continues. We'll be gathered again tomorrow by 5 p.m. on Zoom. Mm -hmm. So I look forward to seeing all these face, beautiful faces tomorrow. It is well. You see, I, I, people like Bible study, but when it comes to prayer, you don't see the faces of eh? Pastor Sophie, you are the prayer department warrior. You are the prayer leader. When it comes to prayer, people don't show face. When it's only Bible study, oh, and that's one thing. Well, people they want you to study, but the, the enemy would not want you to pray. Amen. But that that is not us. We Amen. will all gather tomorrow. Amen. That's the challenge I'm throwing to all of us now. So Amen. if I don't see you, then I know why you did not show up. <laughs> it is well. That's Amen. on the light I'm with. So surely goodness and mercy shall That's follow us. All, All the days of our lives, and we shall and do we shall the Lord and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. Bye. 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 Love you. Love you too.